Hello and welcome to GDB World. Today we'll be having a look at how to make a base for some cliff face materials and turn them into a generator. Uh, we won't be handling the detailing of the rocks at this stage that we handled in a future video. Um, if you have any questions leave a comment um, and I'll be sure to get back to them. Um, otherwise I would like to start the video with just some quick tips. So when creating a rock material, make sure that the direction of the rock is consistent. This means when you're warping a direction or anything like that, trying to make sure it's all flowing the same way and that it's not going to be breaking that consistency. Um, it's somewhat key when creating a rock that's pleasing to the eye. Um, it can give it a bit more flow and it can really help when you're trying to create that sort of S shape or uh, natural look in the rock. Um, so without further ado, let's look at rock one. Rock one is a pretty simple shape. Um, it's just a, sh a rock that is layered and flowing sort of diagonally upwards because it's a nice sort of cliff face look. Um, it's very simple. This whole top section here is purely just the crack section and this bottom section is actually the shape so it's realistically only like six seven nodes or so so it's nice and simple um, overall pretty customizable so pretty good one um, so let's start with how to build it so we've got a nice gradient here and I've just sort of set it to be sort of diagonal um, sort of pointing downwards a little bit doesn't really matter you can sort of go straight across if you like or you know just create any shape you want whatsoever um, we're blending that in for polygon 2 um, at a min darken and we're doing that twice so that I've got two different types of rocks we're then blending those two rocks into the first tile generator with, with an X amount of 4 and a Y amount of 11 um, and we've put an image input onto 2 to allow for two images to be added into it um, it's a random rotation of 0 0.13 and there is no intersection set on the generator at all. Uh, the reason for this is we want the shapes to basically merge into each other um, so that when we set the blending mode on the tile generator it then blends nicely for us. Um, scroll down here a little bit we can see 4.08 for the scale and with an offset of 0.51 and an offset random of 1 and then the rotation random of 0.07 as well as it's angled to the top right and I'm keeping that consistent through this whole graph as well. Uh, I've put the luminance random onto 0.5 just to allow some of the rocks to be smaller or like deeper in than others to give us a bit of depth um, and then this is the real important bit of blending mode is set to max. Uh, both these are set basically the same way, just this one's pointing upwards um, and has uh, about probably 11 more on the Y amount as well. So it just gives us a bit more variation, um, more something that we um, add in after that we've finished the material as like an exposed parameter. Uh, next we're then doing a directional warp of the crystals and then we're doing auto levels to brighten them up and then we're finally blending in the cracks. Now the cracks themselves are made up of the splatter circular node um, all of the other materials use the same one so you can copy and paste it across. Um, we're just doing making the thin disc and also doing a luminance on the disc hitting it through a histogram scan then for a distance node of 5000 then we're doing a transform 2d to angle it in the direction that's the same as our material uh, we hit it for an edge detect now um, with an edge width of 1.5 and a roundness of 1.7 and uh, finally it gets hit with a bevel uh, this just softens the edges a little bit make sure it's not as hard and then there's a levels coming in here this is just for controlling the values um, so that when we come into do our slope blur here we can sort of adjust how strong the slope blur is affecting the image. Um, so we're slope blurring with a purling noise um, and we're just getting this nice sort of gradient flow through here. 
Um, next we do a directional warp and we're warping that with the shape itself to sort of make sure all the cracks aren't uniform and it's always different on each one of these. Um, and then we're warping it again but this time with the crystals one. Um, what that gives us is just a more jagged appearance of the um, cracks. Finally we blend that in and depending on how it shows up in the graph here, adjust the levels accordingly. And then you have your final shape. Rock 2 is this desert pillar sort of rock. Um, so it starts out gradient linear, polygon 2, into a min darken blend node, into a tile sampler, set up the same way as the tile generator above. And we're then using a directional warp node with crystals 1 um, and then that's going to be the source that is driving this other directional warp so we're going to bring us up to what creates that one so we create a tile random with an x amount of 1 and a y amount of 9 with a random color lumens set on it um, that's then driven into a directional warp to then break up the shape um, so that it matches what's happening with the main shape. Um, up here we have a multi-directional warp happening as well. This also further breaks it up a little bit and gives us some more finer details on the lines. Uh, then we're hitting it for an edge detect, then a bevel, then a levels. Um, and then if we look down here we can see that we are also warping again with the original shape and now we're using the previously warped shape as the driver just to warp the actual main shape so this is actually giving us all these lines that you're seeing here um, then we do a safe transform grayscale blurring it to then be used in a slope blur grayscale for this one here. So again gives us some more finer details and breaks up those lines a little bit more. Um, up here we can see we have a shadows node. Uh, what this does is it's just a good way to get that sort of ramp effect inside the cracks that we're looking for. Um, and then we can use a levels to adjust it which then gets blended into the final shape as a min darken. The one prior to that was also a multiply. Um, and then finally there's another directional warp. Uh, this time it's warped with the cell shape above that we use for the cracks. Uh, cracks are basically set up the same way as above. Uh, nothing fancy going on there. Um, and then at the end of all this we're doing our auto levels to bring everything back to a bit of value um, and then there's another blend happening here with a min lighten with some extra details created over here so these details are nice and easy it's basically just a crystal um, being warped into a square in multiple different ways blended and beveled um, like the following into two separate tile sampler nodes because it's two separate details. Uh, those two are then getting warped and then blended together um, to eventually end up like this. And that is also darkened further with a pearl and noise. Um, and then that's the value that gets blended in here. And what that's doing is it's just um, gives us a few more lines through the shape as well as um, give some more of a wavy effect to the rock. That brings us to our third rock which is a Voltaric style. Um, it's set up with a tile sampler, x amount of 10, y amount of 3, um, no rotation or anything like that. There's a size of 0.13 and a y of 1. A scale is set to 0.8 and scale random of 0.8 as well. Position random is set to 0.3 an offset of 0.56. Um, finally we scroll down a little bit and we can see there's a bit of a mask as well, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25,
and then that's a color random of one. Um, that then gets put through a histogram scan as normal, as well as a distance node set to 5000, and then we hit that through a directional warp with the crystals to then break up the shape and give us those jagged edges. Uh, that then allows us to put it through an edge detect of, with a width of one, um, as well as another edge detect with a width of two. Uh, the one above gets just hit for a bevel to be used in a further blend node uh, just for softening bledges, uh, edges but retaining somewhat of a harder shape as well. Um, and the other edge detect gets hit through a flood fill node and then pumped into three gradient flood fill maps and one flood fill B box size. Uh, now just to run through what these do, so the gradient ones takes the normals from the flood fill and it gives you a gradient map based on those normals um, and the flood fill to box size um, <clears throat> takes that same map, checks to see what the size, what's the smallest rock or shape is and then colours it accordingly based on its size. So the smallest rocks will be the deepest and the biggest will be the highest ones which is generally what you want and that just gets hit through an auto levels to be blended at a later date as well. We can manipulate these gradients with a gradient map and that's how you get these sharp shapes. Um, mine look like the following. You're welcome to pause the video to copy the values but I will just experiment um, what other looks you guys would actually get because it doesn't really matter what you put as long as you're happy with how it's going. Um, just remember to try and keep to that same rule of try to keep the rocks flowing in the same direction because um, it will look more natural that way. Um, other than that, uh, there's not much more going on with this rock. There's a Transform 2D to readjust the rotation as well as another directional warp to re-attack um, the edges again um, and then there's some further blending of the rocks um, to sort of resharpen those edges again. Next we can look at how we can turn this into a generator to be used with future materials and get it ready for detailing. Uh, so we come up to the top where the outputs are and we'll create a multi-switch grayscale. And we'll set the number of inputs that we have. So in our case we have three inputs and then we'll connect those inputs to the node. next thing to do is just connect these to the outputs remembering to put in a normal map in between the normals then all that's left to do is to um, test that the switch is working can see we can switch between them now then we just need to expose the switch and we'll just give it a name that makes sense and we'll set the default to one have a minimum of one and leave the max to three and we'll click OK. What this does is it then removes it from the front part of the graph uh, so it's only accessible from the parent node um, and then we can actually just bring in that node and use it for future projects. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, please like and subscribe and I hope you have a lovely day.